I'm Eileen Marcus, and I have to tell you, as I get older, I hate freezing. I especially hated freezing on a ski lift, but I loved skiing. I loved swishing down the mountain in an S-curve. I loved moguls. I hated the clothes. I hated the parking lot. Mush, mush, mush. I hated the walk. I hated the equipment. But most of all, I hated the freezing. And I have to be honest that I haven't skied now in so many years that I have to start saying I used to ski. So why is that so hard to give up something I love that I don't do anymore? And it wasn't just the cold. I gave it up because no matter if I gained weight, lost weight, spent a lot of money, didn't, the clothes never fit right. Halfway down the mountain, I would twist or turn or do something, and something that shouldn't have been exposed was... And I have arthritis, and years of wear and tear made the boots uncomfortable. And then there was the issue that the other people on the hill got faster. Or did I get slower? And then once we were commingled with the snowboarders, you know what I'm talking about, navigating was hard work. It was like being on a six-lane highway. I do not like six-lane highways. I missed the back roads. I hated getting in and out of the parking lot. And I had to come to the grips with the statement, I used, to, I used to ski. So how do I process this loss? Actually, I started this blog three years ago. But yesterday when I walked outside and it was freezing, I was like, thank God I'm not on a ski lift. And there was some joy in that. I had to recognize that I loved skiing for a lot of years, but now I don't. It was the friends, the weekends, the camaraderie. It was more than just the skiing. So the first thing I do is revisit revisionist history. When I break up or lose a friend or a lover, I tend to think it was only all good or all bad. You know, my internal dialogue, why didn't I appreciate it? It's all my fault. Why did I start asking for more? I should have had it. I don't always remember what, what, what was also good. It makes it easier to forget it if I think about it all bad. But my memory of skiing was all good. I, you know, I, I think like my pants fit, I was perfect, I look cute down the mountain like Susie Chapstick, and I have to remember, you know, there's a reason our hair turns gray, because there's some middle ground there. It was good, and there were parts of it I didn't like, and I have to remember that balance of you. I have to accept two divergent thoughts and live without regret. If I want to live without regret, I have to accept the truths. I love skiing, I hated the cold. Swishing down the mountain, I felt free. Carrying all that equipment was exhausting. Breath of fresh air as I gathered speed, and yet the long wait on the lift line, existing. Being able to hold two thoughts keeps me balanced and able to look back on my life with deep gratitude. If I can't get the balanced view, I force myself to write a list. Writing two simple columns, usually on a bright piece of paper, what was good, what sucked. As long as the it's good column is longer, I'm okay. I have to really work to be honest about those columns. Here's a pro tip. Put it all in one notebook or in one part of your computer so you can remember and eventually it becomes a habit and you don't have to keep measuring things. You'll know when it's time to give something up. You have to also be honest even though you don't want to. The truth is I probably couldn't ski even if I wanted to and had the pants that fit. I'm not in shape. And when the pandemic hit and you had to start making reservations for lift lines, I couldn't get out of the house on time. I wanted to linger over my coffee. It was just not happening. Now, if you read the piece, you will notice that I wrote, I had, I was lucky I didn't get down the stairs in the freezing day without breaking my other hip. So the story here is safeguard your hip. I already have one hip replacement at 46. Years of moguls, slipping in the parking lot the night before, I already have only one good hip. So know your body's current ability. One of the downfalls of my skiing career was the last time I bought new equipment, I bought it like I was 20. Racing stands, deep wood core, fast skis. I am not 20 anymore, and those skis were driving me instead of riding me, instead of me riding them. It was really scary. So safeguard your other hip. So what's next? Enjoy what you're doing now, like walking barefoot, shoveling the snow, because not being able to do it is just around the corner. You know I used to be quite the skier. Eileen Marcus for 60 and Me. Check out my book, Managing Annoying People, on Amazon because I'm annoying and looking forward to more conversations. Have a great day.